the unstoppable rise of Islam in Japan. Imagine this. In just over a decade, Japan's Muslim population has more than doubled, making Islam the fastest growing religion in the land of the rising sun. With a whopping 110% increase from 110,000 followers in 2010 to approximately 230,000 by the end of 2022, Islam is making its mark in a country where it once had little presence. What's behind this remarkable growth? Two key factors come into play. A surge in immigration from Muslim-majority countries and an increase in marriages between Muslims and ethnic Japanese. As Japan's population dwindles, the demand for foreign workers is set to rise, opening the door for even more growth in the Muslim community. With a younger demographic than other groups in the country, the future looks bright for second and third generation Japanese Muslims. And with half of Muslims in Japan being married, the likelihood of this would further increase, coupled with other factors such as low anti-Muslim sentiment in Japan and curiosity among the general public. And guess what? There are now around 90 mosques dotted around the nation, a far cry from the 1980s when mosques were virtually non-existent. So this was very interesting because technically the numbers for this came out a little while ago, but I hadn't heard about this until you sent this to me, Armin. I was like, oh, we have to talk about this. This, mm. it just, it was very fascinating to me. What, what are your I mean, it, thoughts? It makes sense, right? Japan, I mean, you could see major shifts in demographics being able to take place in a short time in Japan, given that average Japanese people are not reproducing okay like very there is very low the replacement rate is very very low so if you have any form of uh, part of the demographic that has a high uh, replacement rate you're going to see major shifts in demographic in that sec happening a lot right so plus add that with the whole incel takeover of japan and people being depressed and people being <laughs> wait, isolated wait, wait. and alone. Do you mean yeah. incel as in a lot of people are just involuntarily celibate? Or are you talking about like a Reddit incel? Um, I mean, uh, both, I guess. I mean, I'm talking about people that are not having sex and also are depressed and also feel like society has left them behind and they mm -hmm. feel isolated and alone and you come with religion and they're like yes please give me some meaning give me some purpose so i don't know which one is do you think is happening more in japan is it more of a demographic change where you see people are just the, the muslims are just reproducing more or are also are people also converting is conversion a factor here you conversion know? is way less of a factor than mm -hmm. immigration and higher birth rates because they're actually getting married and they're actually having children mm -hmm. and they're mm -hmm. younger so mostly... they're younger than other demographic groups in the country so they it gives them that extra boost and power in that realm yeah yeah you know as as ex-muslims you might one you might think that we're gonna see this as a negative right but honestly japan needs immigration <laughs> japan needs oh, a lot of immigration real. i wouldn't I, I you know i i look at this from a global perspective i don't care much about countries becoming more muslims just because muslims are moving from one place to another right because is this the same amount of islam in the world <laughs> right so <laughs> in fact i think muslims you know, sec secular countries having more Muslims in them, it's better because the Muslim, they become secularized after a couple of generations. Like the same people, if they were reproducing, let's say you had Muslims in Pakistan, right? And they were reproducing in Pakistan. Now they're in Japan and now they're reproducing in, Jap in Japan. To me, that's a net good because the same people that might have been more radical in Pakistan are now 
being born in Japan. So it's not like the net Muslim, net Islamic of the world has changed. You know what I mean? Because these are the same people that mm -hmm. would have been born in Pakistan. But now in Japan, and now these same people are being influenced, being exposed by non-Islamic ideas. Mm -hmm. Right? So now the, the battle of ideas are happening more within an individual. So secular people and secular ideas are going to have more access to Muslims if they are living in non-Islamic countries. So yeah. I am pro. So I am pro. First of all, I'm pro immigration, and I think Japan needs immigration. Yeah. Japan needs to put badly, and Japan needs to welcome people, including Muslims, in Japan. And I also think like Muslims living in non-Muslim countries makes it easier for us to influence them, the world to influence them with liberal ideas. So yeah. I see this as a positive. I don't see. It. I don't see this as a negative. What do you guys it was really interesting. I was reading an article about this, and then it also talked about it profiled a small community in some town. I can't remember where it was, right? And in this town, there was a Pakistani Muslim guy who had moved to Japan, and he was – it talked about his, this – huge project he's taken on to try to find a cemetery to get buried in and build a Muslim cemetery, which is a huge problem because in Japan, everyone gets cremated, but I believe that's not allowed. That's not per permissible in Islam. So it was all about how the community was reacting to the idea of building a cemetery. Like they thought that the cemetery would pollute the water and make it like kind of spiritually unclean or something even though there's there weren't according to the articles there aren't you know si there's not scientific evidence to support this or whatever when things are done right so it wasn't a real health concern and it was talking about the contention that this community faces um in welcoming this new population there were some people that were like oh, you know, like they've come to our country, they've integrated well into our community, they're really nice, like they deserve to have something that fits their way of life. And then there were other people who were like, no, if they come to Japan, they need to be Japanese. And Japanese in their mannerisms, right? And that means you need to be cremated because that's what we do here. What do you think about that? Wait, what? What the hell? Um... Yeah, they're like, if Wait, you're going to move to Japan, you need to be Japanese in your mannerisms. And so we, if we cremate people here, you need, you like, you're not going to get a cemetery. I don't like, yeah. they, they okay, didn't care that that was not religiously permissible. It's like, you need to be, you need to assimilate. Well, I generally, I like more freedoms than less freedoms. So Hot I don't day. like that. Yeah, I don't, I, <laughs> I don't know if the excuse was that, well, in Japan, we don't have land for burial. I would be like, okay. But if the excuse is like, you have to accept our ways. I don't like, well, if your ways means like not beating women, I would be like, great. But if your ways <laughs> is not, if your ways means like something that is not harmful. I mean, your ways burning people is worse for. Um, no, Armin, I, don't, I mean, then. granted, there's probably there's probably lots of research into the carbon footprint of being buried versus being cremated. And I think being cremated actually has a smaller carbon footprint. OK, but if that's the ex whatever, if that's the excuse, I would be like, OK, fine, that make that law. But not like you have to accept our mannerism unless the mannerism is something that we has been proven. It, it, the excuse is this is better for society. I would accept that. But not just because you have to accept our ways. That's dumb multiculturalism as long as it doesn't harm people that's the way to go by the way sasan is saying yeah you agree mm -hmm, of course yeah i think i'm i think maximum freedom until you hit the wall of harming people that's that's what we go here right and and even if we hit the wall of harming people the excuse of stopping people is that you're harming people not that this is just a mannerism what the hell? Okay, Sasan is saying no to no. The spread of Islamic idea is ideas is a negative. You're not paying attention, Sasan. You're not paying attention. These people are. Susanna said it's mostly by birth, not because of their convert. They're not converting people. So these people would have had the birth. The in the uh, these people would have had the same Muslim children in wherever they were. So are you trying to save the world or are you trying to save Japan? Because this, that's the same number of Muslims on the planet. 
whether they're born in Japan or in Pakistan, it doesn't make a difference. In fact, if you're worried about the spread of bad ideas, you want these Muslim children to be born in non-Islamic countries so that we could steal them <laughs> right so we could go after their children if they if a muslim if muslim children are born in pakistan or in bangladesh or in saudi arabia we have less access to them we want them to be born in the united states in the uk or in japan so we could get liberal ideas influencing them right yeah, Does that make sense? I agree. I mean, yeah. to, to your point, Mustafa himself is saying, I think the biggest contributor to my atheism is my family moving from Oman to the United States. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. And so I want to address. Go yeah, ahead. Go I was just no, saying, let's no, not no. divide the world into Muslim countries and non Muslim countries and try to save the non Muslim countries from the people of Muslim countries. We're trying to save the planet, okay? And that would involve all the people in it, including the Muslims, right? So if we are against Islam, not, not, let's look at Islam as a mind virus, but let's, let's not look at the Muslims themselves as the sickness, right? We, these, are, these are sick, maybe these are the victims, the patients that we would like to have access to. So if they move to non-Islamic countries, now these are patients that we could, you know, that we could help. Go on. Oh, I wanted to address a different comment. Actually, there's two that I now want to address. First is from Trells, and he's contending with what you said about second generation immigrants, saying no, oh, excuse me, that is generally not what we see, what we are seeing in Europe. We find that later generations are more radical than their parents who might have already been backward, for example, Turks in Germany. This no. is a result of a failure of integration. Mm-hmm. And this is a result of, there are very interesting studies that happened in the United States where if you pull a, a parent who immigrated to America about their experience of racism, they will give a lower experience of racism than their children. And the theory behind that is, is that the children who have grown up within a society are more adept at seeing the subtleties of bias and bigotry than they experience than someone who moved into the country them who outside of the country so that leads me and this is you know just me thinking about the knowledge i have this is speculation that what you see with these second generations is a result of socioeconomic disenfranchisement failure of integration and experiences of xenophobia which push people yeah. towards being othered and when people are othered, they're emotionally vulnerable and they look for things to make them feel powerful. Yeah. And they're easy targets for recruitment, extremely easy targets for recruitment into radical ideologies. So that's my two cents. Yeah, I mean, you're seeing the opposite of what Troll is saying in Canada and US, right? Because they're he's more integrated there. It's easier for them to feel part of society than in Europe. But also in Europe, we, I need to see numbers because... What people are seeing and uh, saying is happening in Europe, they are uh, usually, I don't know if Troll has actual statistics to back this up, but usually they, the, the most radical parts of society are the most visible ones, right? So you might notice that there are a lot of second generations, later generation people that are more radical, but the numbers, like what you see, might not necessarily reflect the numbers because a whole bunch of in Europe, we also have uh, major uh, ex-Muslim groups. So these later generations are also a major source of um, ex-Muslim movements and secular movements coming from the same uh, Muslim family. So, And also a, a major group of people in between, a major uh, group of Muslims who are neither radical Muslims or ex-Muslims who are living more liberal lives, especially those Muslims who are more in contact with the rest of the society. Because, yeah, again, as Susanna said, the, the more radical parts that you see is the more isolated parts. So it's not just immigration itself that is a factor. So if you, I say if you bring Muslims to non-Muslim countries, they are more likely to become liberalized and secularized. 
well, that's true unless you make a mini Islamic country in that non-Islamic country. Like if you create in London, you create an Islamic part, then you get actually, you get the worst of both worlds. You get at the same time, you get the effects of xenophobia while the isolation being in a Muslim community that you already have in Pakistan or some somewhere else. So you're not going to get the effects of immigration in the way I'm suggesting. Like your immigrants... Muslim immigrants to Canada, U.S. are getting that b benefit. They're they're facing less xenophobia, but at the same time, um, they're being exposed to the rest of society. And I think that's the same thing with Japan, because in Japan, I mean, could be the same thing in Japan. Like if if they you don't. By the way, you don't need. But by influencing these people, I'm not necessarily suggesting that you have activists coming to them and explaining to them why Islam is wrong. I'm talking about the majority of people who get secularized or liberalized without even facing criticism of Islam just because they're exposed to alternative ways of thinking without anybody intentionally trying to convince them out of Islam. You know, they read other books, they watch other TV shows, they listen to, they have friends that are not Muslims that have don't have Islamic viewpoints. These all influence your mind. It's not just like an ex-Muslim coming and telling you why Islam is wrong. Does that make sense? Yeah, and to my point, Mustafa is saying to that point, I think my family moving to the U.S. made my brother more dogmatic. Mm. So like the influence of these things can be so different on other people. The article did state that anti-Muslim sentiment is very, very low in Japan. There are Muslims that were profiled really? in the article that said that it's better to be Muslim in Japan than in the West because in Japan, it's seemingly people either just don't know anything so they don't even have preconceived no, like conceptions to be bigoted towards you. Um, I think some of the hesitance comes more from a xenophobia than in Mm. from a issue with Islam itself. You know, mm. th the foreignness of it is more of a problem than the religion or belief behind it, seemingly. But for people saying that, like, Japan can't stand up to Islam, blah, 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 for the percentage, for the number of Muslims that were in Japan in 2022, that is less than 0.2% of the pro of the population of the country. They don't even crack half a, a quarter. They don't even crack a quarter of a percentage point. So yeah. it's such a yeah. tiny, like, guys, don't, like, be alarmist. <laughs> like, yeah, but again, I don't, if Japan tries to confront Islam, that would actually be backfire. I think the way to confront Islam is not to confront Islam, is to just accept people and make them feel not isolated. You're confronting Islam by doing that, okay? If you just expose them to your culture without like, oh, we're going after your Islam, okay? That will already make them multiple ideas in their head would be competing with each other, right? If a Japanese Muslim girl goes to school and meets other girls who are not Muslims and she doesn't feel like she doesn't belong here, okay? You're already introducing her to other ways of thinking other identities than being muslim that's what you need to do yeah just be nice just be here's the thing just be nice you could fight islam by being nice to people <laughs> that's that's how it works i mean here's the thing christians have learned that i was watching um some christians i was watching um in, uh, guides on how to do perfect missionary work you know, I told you about this, right? Like, if you want to bring people to Jesus, you don't tell them about Jesus. This is this is this was a guidebook on ex the, how to do mm. the perfect missionary work. And like, you don't talk to them about Jesus. This is what you do: you go and you be their best friend. Okay, you just be noticeably Christian without talking about Christianity. You help them move when they need. You be you when they're sick, you go and take you bring food to them, right? When they need your when they need somebody to look after dog, you volunteer for them. You just be so nice to them. And one day they're gonna wonder if you are being this good of a person because you're Christian, and they're gonna ask you about it. And they say, This is how you do missionary work. 
this is how you get to people. And I was like, these people have figured this thing out. <laughs> these people have like, this is how it works. Yeah. This is a long term so investment. manipulative though. <laughs> well, I have a friend. Emotional. I have a friend of mine that lives in uh Muslim majority country. I won't say where. <laughs> and he ha made friends with a bunch of foreigners, and they were like Americans or Canadians <laughs> or something. And he thought that they were just like cool people that were open minded and different than the people he was used to in his community. Till he was following them on Instagram. And he sent it to me. It was a screenshot of their stories where it shows them all sitting together. And it was like, such a lovely day, like bringing the word of Christ to people, blah, blah, blah. Like, we're so grateful to do this. And he's like, he felt so disgusted and used. It was like, you don't even see me as a friend. You're not actually interested in me. You're interested in, in me as a pet project. A pet project mm -hmm. of conversion. And he was disgusted by it. And yeah, I can completely understand why. Well, you should. <laughs> well, well, Rebecca is saying that's what I'm doing with you, Armin. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> no, she's, no she, I should. Is it working? <laughs> well, you shouldn't have told me. Now I know yeah, you're being the, manipulated. The mask off moment. The no, I mean, he is. I think people. No, I think Rebecca is joking. Rebecca is just not, Rebecca no, can't I know. be not nice. She's that's just her. I, that's just how she is. She's, She's a lovely nice. woman. <laughs> yeah, but but I say that um, I just think you should be nice just because it's nice to be nice, right? Um, it, it's just good to be good to people, right? What? Newman is saying, "Run, run! Bread of life is gonna get us." <laughs> <laughs> No, but I, I say this for people who seem not to value being good to people and they think like to attack Islam, we have to attack Muslims as well. I'm like, okay, even if you're an a-hole and you just want to defeat, but you just want to defeat Islam, at least for at least for strategic reasons, be nice to people. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm targeting those kind, those groups of people. The rest of us, we, we could just see the value on, on being good to people just just for the sake of it, right? But if some people and some people are like, "No, I hate Islam," therefore Muslim, this, this, and that. I'm like, okay, this is not how you can even defeat. It. This doesn't work. This doesn't work. This actually, yeah. um, you know, makes Muslims, you know, cling on to Islam even more. We got some super chats that we need to highlight. Let me yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, are there any last comments you wanted to address before we go to the super chat? Because it's a little bit unrelated. The Okay, so somebody is saying, let's spread Arminism and Susanism. I like that. Speaking like that of Japan, we have Mr. Shinobi promoting Arminism Ooh. and Susanism. <laughs> yes, Japan, that would, I think that would improve Japan. Um, and yeah, um, Nico is saying, Armin wants us to use love bombing for atheism. <laughs> I like that, love bombing for atheism. Let's do oh, that. No. Let's make that happen. Yeah. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.